Okay, my SQL learners. So in this session, we are going to take a brief look at row level logs in MySQL. I have three sessions. I'm already connected to my e-commerce database, MySQL database. And this is how the data looks now. So we have a products table which holds, um, you know, this data. Only two books now, just dummy data that I created. And this, this is the price and you have the quantity column uh, showing you how many, how much quantity is left for each of these books. So the first session is a seller session. The second session is a buyer session. We can call this buyer one session. And the third session is a buyer two session. so this is the data and just for clarity actually i wanted to show you the transaction isolation setting which is read committed and the auto commit is turned to uh, turned off basically it's disabled so unless i commit explicitly uh, my transactions will not be permanent So let's actually start with a seller. Uh, he's going on the website or a portal that he has available to update the inventory of, let's say the book one, right? Or the product one, which is this book. And so he's gonna click some buttons, which is gonna translate to an update statement being executed in this database right so let's say he wants to increase the the number of books available in the inventory so that will mean quantity is going to be incre incremented by 50 so that's the update statement and he's going to run that update and we can look at the buyer one session let's say buyer one is trying to buy the same book and and then so he's going to go on the website and then click on buy now or whatever and that is going to translate into this update statement in the database which is quantity equals quantity minus one so reducing the quantity by one meaning he's buying a, buying a book and of course there's going to be you know other statements updating other tables but then to keep it simple I'm just showing you the products table changes section so as you can see this is going to wait because seller is updating this particular row actually and that can be um, seen using a query on data logs. So if you run the, uh, this query, of course you can modify this query as per your needs, but then if you query this, you will see that there's a bunch of sessions and there's is the lock mode column and then the table on which or the database on which the locks are happening the table so it gives you a lot of details so so if you want to understand what's going on here so we have products table and then we have ix lock which is intention exclusive lock on the table itself meaning like a transaction is about to get an exclusive lock and this is at the table level but don't get tricked by that there's also another row indicating there is a record level or a row level lock and and that is locking only this uh, data equals one so if you remember our update statement we are using product id so and the data for which is one actually 
so product id equals one so that's what we are seeing over here and if you see here this buyer session has actually timed out already so he's going to attempt to buy again so that's how like you can actually look at the locking details in this table let's try let's say like buyer two comes in at this point and then he um, just tries to browse the the inventory on the e-commerce website so that would mean uh, a sell a query a read query and he's he's able to do this happily actually right so there is no problem so while the row logs are happening uh, other sessions can read this table they can even look at the data for the same product but they they just cannot buy this book because that is being locked by the seller so again it timed out so at this point buyer 2 wants to buy a different book you know i'm not able to buy this book let me try buying a different book that's going to translate to uh, you know product id id equals 2 which is not being locked by the seller and then that update goes through and at this point let's say the seller has completed uh, updating the inventory and of course if you look at the data now it's going to look different because this has been updated to 150 and of course this hasn't gone down because buyer buyer one is still in the process of buying the book because the commit has not happened yet in the application and then if we look at the data again the data has gone down or the, the quantity has gone down and then buyer two let's say wants to buy the first book that buyer one wanted to buy but at this point there are no no locks in this table because everyone's committed and let's say buyer two is trying to buy this this book and then he goes through with the update and then commits and look at data and then the data is changing actually so this is how a row level lock basically allows for high concurrency so only the rows which are locked by your transactions are not available for these other sessions to modify right so the other records which are not touched by your transactions are available for updating deleting etc and all of course you can add new books that means inserting new records in this table so I just wanted to show you the difference between table level logs and row level logs so this session and my previous session will, uh, will be useful in understanding that difference thank you I'll see you in my next session